Y'all, I cannot believe it. I'm actually finally catching a show from the semi-beginning. I'm, I know it's on episode two. But like I said, they start these shows start so late in, late in the week. And I can't do videos on the weekend. So I, I missed out on giving y'all episode one from the beginning. But, you know, episode one was just introducing us to the girls. Uh, so really, I can wrap both episodes up into one. It's no longer I'm five episodes behind. We're on episode two of the Bell Collective on the OWN Network. So let me go ahead and run down the girls real quick. Thank goodness it's only five of them. So it ain't too many names for me to keep up with. So the first one is, and I'm looking on my computer. I had, It took me a minute to find an a article page where it had their names and their images. So the first one is, let me see. Dr. Internet Lyles, one of the few black female dentists in the state. Dr. Lyles is navigating a recent divorce and opening her very own dental practice. So that's the um, light brown skin chick, perfect teeth, you know, up to dental profession, honey. Uh, clockable brown and black wig. I, I can't stand those types of wigs, but I understand they... Honey, they, they some work in progress, honey. Fortunately, she's very beautiful, honey. So she, she's giving the Barbie doll look with that. Next, we got the, the head honcho, the center of the show, uh, that's trying to bring everybody together to re revive the um, community, um, is Letitia Pearson, honey. Um, she's the CEO of the National Women's Brunch Organization. Her brunches bring powerful women together and help promote self-empowerment. But now she has one goal in mind to bring the ladies together to re revitalize the Ferris Street, an iconic black neighborhood in Jackson, Mississippi, baby. Come on through, Miss Dargon Pearson. Or is it Pearson? Is it Pearson or Pearson? I want to say it might be Pearson. Next is we got Latrice Rogers, honey. Latrice Rogers is the young mastermind and entrepreneur behind Goddess Slims which is about to be some controversy behind in a moment. Hold on to that. Um, the most successful hair care emporium in the region. Okay, region. Then we got Marie Hamilton Apstone, honey. Apstone. A-B-S-T-O-N. Uh, Self-made millionaire and CEO of Bustling Hamilton Davis Mental Health Empire. Come on, we finally got a, a, a black sister on the screen in the darn on mental health profession. I mean, well, second one, because we do got Dr. Amani over there on um <laughs> Child, that's probably why they darn gone canceled because I can't I, I I couldn't think of the show. And the sad thing is they part of a darn gone franchise. Uh, Mary the Medicine, Mary the Medicine, LA. I swear, charged to my mind, not my heart. I, I watched every episode. The reason y'all canceled that damn show ain't due to me, honey. But honey, they said darn gone. We ain't gonna have darn gone season three of darn gone Mary the Medicine, LA. It's still up in limbo, honey. Uh, they better hope they get a revival. Um, like darn gone Queen Sugar did. Queen Sugar was supposed to be canceled. Uh, this season coming up, but they done already got renewed for season six. Hopefully, darn gone Mary the Medicine might, cause we need multiple black, you know, mental health professionals. Uh, legitimate licensed ones. No shade to darn gone. Uh, Ayana fix my life, but these are the ones who went to school and got the degree and the credentials, honey. I'm just saying, there ain't nobody really ever fixed their life on that dang old show of Ayana's, honey. But then we got the... I'm going to go ahead and call her the legitimate, darn on successful Carly Red. She reminds me of Carly Red. Like, her look reminds me of Carly Red. Well, without the, you know... Without the botch booty implants. But Tambre Cherie is a newly single... Midday diva and an on-air radio personality for Jackson's top hip-hop and R&B station and host of the most controversial radio show in the city, The Relationship Hour. It must be just that city. Yeah, they say it's city. I was about to say, honey, the damn show can't be the nation. I think that title goes to the Breakfast Club, honey. And that breaks down all of the cast. Now let's get into the opening, honey. So... A few things that stuck out to me. Uh, Letitia, let's get her on out of the way. 
um, pretty much dealing with a new divorce. She is fresh. She trying to gravel through it. And I'm wrapping up both episodes in one. So that's why I might seem like I'm jumping in and out from episode one and two. Because like I said, I'm combining both of them together. So summing up the first two episodes from her. Uh, she getting her dental practice together. Trying to make her parents proud. Making sure she knows about that. She can do it on her own. That's what I'm getting from her. And she's the best friend um, to none other than Latrice Rogers. Now, Latrice Rogers is married to this guy. I, I didn't get his name. Once again, by episode three, I get the other sub characters um, together, you know, names. But she's married to somebody who's 20 years her senior who uh, helped her get her hairline and stuff together. Well, not really help. He, you know, he was a financial assist, but he was reluctant. He didn't darn on believe that she had it. He would just want her to be the sugar, ba uh, you know, sugar baby or, you know, the trophy wife in this case. And, you know, she wanted to be her own independent grown woman. Now, it's good to still have, you know, practice hypergamy and all of that and, you know, have, you know, a good count in your corner. A faithful darn on old to darn on gentleman. But she said, honey, just in case shit go left, I, I want to make sure I still have my own empire, honey. So that's what she did with the darn on goddess limps, honey. Which is darn on getting everybody darn on judged up and stuff. But she got, you know, some issues going on with her husband being on his alpha male type shit. It seems like he wants to be over assertive at times. And wants to put her in the white, like the trophy wife category is what I'm getting. But it's like she's at the same time trying to showcase she's her own businesswoman. And she showed that by proving him wrong that he didn't believe in the dream of the company. And now it's turning out that he now might wants to become a silent investor in said company. So that's what we got from her. Then we got... um. We got Marie Hamilton Axton, honey. We see her walking around in her building with her darn on bestie. I ain't seen too much work yet. Not to say that she ain't working, but um, she she pretty much in the office doing the damn thing. That's the only thing that I've really seen of her. And we're going to get back to her. Tambourine, same thing. Willie really haven't seen too much just yet. Uh, so now let's get into the nitty gritty. What, what's really done started all off was this hair shenanigan, honey. So, like I said, we got, uh, oh, well, no, we also got Letitia. I, I almost skipped over you, honey. How the hell I skipped over the figure here the damn show? Uh, Letitia, um, she want to revitalize the district of here, and that's what's bringing everybody together. She wants to revitalize this old area that used to be, um, Pretty much black royalty, black economic empowerment for the Mississippi area. Once again, I don't know nothing about Mississippi. I've never been Mississippi a day in my life. But this used to be the uh, the pivotal of black success. And it's almost like equivalent to Atlanta. It's like Atlanta, Potomac. It's like this is what their equivalent is in Mississippi is the Farish area. But the Farish area has gone from sugar to shit. It's all, the you know dilapidated, run down, busted down, every negative stereotype that you could um, put on a, a run down area is now, you know, looking slummish and she wants to revive it, honey. So she darn on comes up with her woman's empowerment brunch and that what brings everybody together. That what brings the whole cast together. So as we got that going on with her, now we got Self-made millionaire. I swear by episode three or four, I'm going to learn their names where I won't have to look at the screen. But Marie apparently brought some hair from Latrice Rogers' uh, salon. Obviously, she wasn't there or they would have met each other. But she got some hair and it went up to the Goddess Limp properties. Now, she's, she made it the point that she was going to tell Miss Latrice about herself. When she goes to this woman's empowerment brunch of her girl pal, 
during on uh Marie, right? And this, I mean, not Marie, but uh, Letitia. Now, this is where you in the wrong, honey. So you are already wanting to darn on start some shit. You are, that, that wasn't the time. Now, she could have sold you some bad hair, yeah. But why are you going to darn on air her out publicly? See, that that's that shit with you, honey. And then you want to bring it back to your friend. And make it seem like after the fact that old girl started with you. No, you started with her. And you know you started with her. You you could have pulled her to the side and would have told her, like, girl, I got I, I got a little something to tell you. You know I went to your uh place, right? And you know, my hair looking a little bit stiff. I ain't want to tell you in front of the girls, but you know, this is your hair. And I understand that every now and again with human hair, you might have a bad batch every now and again, and you know. You accidentally sold me a bad batch. So is there any way that I can get a substitution? Or since it's already in my head, can I get a significant discount on my next hair purchase or something? You know, can, you know, some way to rectify this situation. That's how you should have came at her, darn on Marie. But instead, you call her yourself saying that this hair, you, you darn gonna just talking cold cash shit across the table talking about, ooh, this is the hair you selling all this, that, and the third, and and it's like, girl, that customer's always right bullshit only go but so far. Because I'd be damned if you want to darn go put me on blast in in a in the open public outside of my darn on salon and think I'm going to give you darn go professional courtesy. It's like, bitch, we're not in the salon, honey. And you're not coming to me like a darn go customer. Yeah, I mean, and then the thing is, she want to hide behind, oh, this is how you treat your customers. First of all, bitch... It, it, you supposed to be the self-made millionaire of the show. Uh, is this how a customer supposed to act? Once again, that shit goes both ways. Now, just because the uh the boss don't supposed to go back with you, you that don't give you free reign to darn on act ass yourself because you a businesswoman too, and y'all both recording on darn on national syndicated television. So you think you get the darn on just darn on come at her sideways? And they're going to talk reckless and unprofessional talking about this, you, this the hell you selling this. You ought to be ashamed and all this, that, and the third. And you think she just supposed to take that? Girl, you doing too motherfucking much. You doing too motherfucking much, girl. And like I said, for you to be a... a and then you supposed to be working at a mental health facility of all that. Girl, you, you was acting real unstable and foolishness, honey. Real unstable and foolishness. You really made it behind at your own self, honey. I would have just let you sit there and doggone uh, made you look foolish. I'd be like, well, if that's what you think, I, I wouldn't engage at all. I would have just sat there. See, the problem with uh, Latrice is she doggone uh, wanted to go back for which in that time frame, I can understand because she definitely needed a clap back, but that was not the moment at the girl. I would have made her in front of all those women look foolish by darn going just arguing with her damn self. And then the next time we got together outside of a professional setting, then I would have got her motherfucking ass together. Be like, now, bitch, if you had, like, if she said it later on in the show, uh, episode two, like, girl, my uh, my hours of customer service is between 10 to 5, Monday through Friday. You had agreements with your order. You should have darn gone roll by the salon between the hours of operation. You don't get the darn gone roll up on somebody in public outside of their business and then still expect darn gone professional customer service in regards to a car. That's like if I had an issue with a Walmart order. I purchased something from Walmart or, you know, uh, uh, or any store. And instead of going to the store and, and express my grievance, I see the owner of said store at a restaurant or at a, at a party function. And I go and I go and darn gonna complain about my darn on service or order whatever I had that went wrong with they um, business and a darn on party function. Honey, y'all would look at me like a run down, busted arm on hood rat. So, girl, this is how America is looking at you right now. Also, let me say this. Now, y'all both share some fault with this hair. And this is the this is what really got me with these two episodes is the hell. Y'all know the beautician in me 
And once again, before y'all get to reading me, honey, my my uh, my background is in aesthetics first, so don't get to reading me about my darn on here, honey. Don't, don't do that. Don't do it. Um, but I still know cosmetology. And my thing is this. Girl, you, the way you was darn on uh, calling yourself detangling and curling the hair and all that, it's like, girl, you, you share some fault in the way that your hair was stiff as well. Because number one, human hair don't mean mermaid hair. See, y'all be having this unrealistic expectations of these different ethnic groups that you be wearing on your head. Because you, you get this darn on Peruvian, Brazilian, Colombian, Eurasian, um, and all of this. And think that it posed to work magical wonders. Honey, human hair is still subject to darn on wear and tear. Human hair is still subject to wear and tear. And just because it ain't coily and kinky like this bitch. Don't mean that darn on uh, straight hair cannot tangle up. Human hair naturally can still be tangled, over processed, split ends, and everything else. Talking about... Oh, you think there's some synthetic mixed in the this? Girl, it ain't had nothing to do with no darn on synthetic. And number one, before you even put the hair on your head, you supposed to done done your several tests first. But then again, I, I wouldn't expect for her to know all this. But it's like, with you being a multimillionaire, I would expect for you to have a pocket darn on gay stylist or somewhere to do all the stuff for you. Like, before you put it on your head, you supposed to have already done washed it, shampooed it, conditioned it. Because once again, the wigs leak. And then I noticed her products are uh, uh, cheap. Like, girl, how you go wearing this high dollar head talking about $600 and then wanting to use some swap? I can't stand our sisters who do that shit. Want to buy a six, $700 wig and then put darn on the cheapest darn on shampoo conditioner in the bitch. Now, I'm not saying that you got to put no $50, $60 darn on, uh, you know, Etsy product up in the bitch like your own here. But can the shit get some darn gone Shea Moisture? Hell, Dove came out with an old natural line that's pretty decent for six, seven dollars. Um, Carol's daughter ain't high dollar like that no more. You can put some darn going uh seven, eight dollar Carol's daughter up in the hair. Some thank goodness I'm naturals up in the hair. Now, like I said, when you get the uh uh, Jane card and all that. I don't expect for you to put no $22 shit up in here, especially if it's a very long, you know, luscious hair. And you, you only got so much of the product, but it's like, girl, swabs and all of that is not going to cut. Now, some of them is decent. Now, Aussie Moors, I, I, I go for the Aussie Moors, but that swab, that Garnier fruit teeth, no, that, that's not going to be it, honey. Get you some decent shampoo and conditioner. And then when you got that conditioner in, well, conditioner with slip, then that's where you detangle the hair and let it properly air dry. And then if you really wanted to uh, save you some time on that curling and shit, you darn gone should have did, um, uh, you would have been bell off doing a darn go, uh, a roller set with it. A roller set or, you know, flexi ride it. And that way you wouldn't even have to put no heat on it. And then that would reduce, you know, heat that, uh, you know, frying the ends because once again, just because it's darn on a human hair wig, it can still break down uh, over time, especially if it's a, a color process here. I forgot what it was. I think it had some pops or highlights up in it. But once again, it can still wear down over time on the hair. So you could have did that as uh, as a substitute, the main, and, and it probably would have lasted longer because you damn sure wasn't curling the hair right. Talking about the hair can't hold no curl pattern. Uh, two things that went wrong with that hair not holding the curl pattern. Number one, did you even buy the right hair for it to hold a curl pattern? Because not all, uh, if you brought straight hair, straight hair ain't really meant to hold a curl. Straight hair that is natural human hair that's not processed because the difference between version and rim. Now, Remy, they can manipulate the hair fibers to, you know, curl. So you can get straight Remy hair. And th see, this is what people don't be knowing. And that's why I say j just get your darn on token gauge stylist or fellow female stylist to do this shit. Because I think people be get getting Remy hair and virgin hair confused. Remy straight hair, yeah, it can darn on, it can be silky straight and then hold a curl. But natural virgin straight hair, 
that genetically on the donor did not hold a curl pattern, what makes you think it's about to hold a curl pattern on your head all of a sudden? So that's the first thing. If you want it darn on a uh, uh, hair that can be manip uh, that can go for straight and darn on curly, you should have still got a texture that has somewhat of a curl to it. You could have got you a medium wavy hair, uh, like a 2B texture, and that way uh, it's easier enough to press out the wave and get that silky straight look that you're going for. And that, because you want to flat iron it anyway, so it's like, I don't understand why you want a, a straight hair out the darn gone pack when you know you always, you are, you're going to put a hot comb or whatever to it anyway. Get you a darn gone 2B curl texture and then flat iron it for the straightness. And by it still having um, the natural wave pattern into it, wavy hair is more susceptible to holding a curl pattern than genetically straight hair. So if you want the best of both worlds, Honey, get you a darn on nice, uh, a nice silky to be darn on texture, darn on hair, honey. That's how you do that. So number one, you brought, you more likely brought the darn on wrong hair. Then number two, it's like you doing all this darn on. I'm trying to figure out what, what was, what was you trying to do? Like, was you trying to go for a loose way with that, the, the way that you was, uh, curling it or whatever? Because you was. Curling it down, I was like, okay, I understand editing. and they can't show us everything. But it's like, during the three parts that you showed us, it's like, still, I didn't see you cuff the darn on curl not one time. Because when you darn on curling the hair, you're supposed to darn on let it hold up in your hand for a few seconds to let the darn on curl darn on set. And then you drop the hair, honey. That's how you're supposed to do that. And then if you really want to get darn on nasty with it, honey, you get them darn on clips, honey, and darn on really pin them up in place until it's time. And then uh, take them pins down and then lightly finger it through. That's how you would have did it if, that, if it was the right type of hair. Because once again, you probably didn't even have the right type of hair for it. So that's the uh, the thing that you went wrong Miss Darn on what, what what's her name again? Marie Hamilton Abston. That's where you went wrong with the darn on here. It's like, girl, you can have the most darn on gorgeous darn on one donor hair. The Indian from one donor, and the the hair can still be shitty if you darn on treat it like shit, honey. You can't darn on expect to buy no six hundred dollar hair and darn on just. Be doing what you was doing and think that it posted darn on work wonders. Now, this is where the owner went wrong. Latrice Rogers. Girl. Now, you know, even darn on Elevated Styles uh, sells mostly synthetic units. And even they come with a care card instruction. Like, girl, I'm trying to figure out, did your darn on high dollar, $600 wig not come with some proper care instructions? Or, you know, is we missing something? Like, uh... I want you to tell us that your your wigs come with some darn gone care instructions and she overlooked the instructions. But I didn't hear that from Miss Latrice. I didn't hear that she darn gone had a nice care instruction of you uh, telling her, okay, instead of trying to brush the hair out dry, which is going to promote darn gone split ends or whatnot, you post the darn gone uh, detangle it via a detangling spray. Or, y'all, let me get some darn going something for my lips first, y'all. I'm getting sick of looking myself in the camera and my lips dry. But anyways, you posed the darn going told her to get some detangling spray or darn going um, condition it and then use the conditioner as a form of detangling. I know that was again. I know if it was irritating me, it was irritating y'all. I know y'all was like, "You talking shit about the girls, honey?" I want you to do something with these lips. Well, my lips are not darn gonna done, honey. Now, is you gonna darn gonna get these wigs done right, darn on the trees, girl? You letting the darn on Marie darn gonna talk cold cash money shit about your darn gonna wigs and stuff, and you share some blame in this too? Cause like I said, where was the darn gonna care card instruction? Where was the care card instruction? So, yeah, those are my thoughts on that hair situation. Honey, both of them out of order in regards to that. It's like, honey, you should have gave a care card instruction. Uh, 
Marie, you should have came to her like a professional and not at no darn on random darn on function and trying to air her own blast and she gave you the clap back and now you want to run back and darn on tell your friend as if she darn on started with you first talking about you didn't sin for and then that's another thing girl don't, don't darn on sit up there and lie talking about I didn't end darn on uh she didn't say she said a sit a, a different terminology for I didn't sin for you what the fuck you mean you didn't sin for her you and Nick, they was having a whole different conversation about hair and all this, that, and the third. I don't know what brought up the subject of hair, but they wasn't talking about your hair. And then you eased it on in there, and now I'm going to try to air out on blast. I'm like, well, I got this hair from your darn on place, and this ain't up to your darn on so-called quality. You start that damn shit, Marie. Talking about you didn't sin for her. You What, what the hell you mean? And you darn gonna call yourself trying to put her on blast in front of a whole women, a whole group of women doing a women empowerment darn gonna brunch of all things at your besties darn gonna empowerment brunch. You not interrupted the whole flow so bad that your darn on bestie darn on uh what's her name Letitia, she couldn't even darn on uh bring up the darn on revival of the darn on fair uh, fair street district. So that's what we got from that. You darn gone just cut the food. And then now we are uh, going into the birthday party. Now we finally get, because, you know, during this whole first episode, Tambra Sharice, she had another engagement. She wasn't darn gone there to witness everything. She had to get the uh, the blow by blow by way of darn gone uh, Letitia. And Letitia came in on the tail end of the shit. She really didn't get the full grasp of the whole situation. So now... We got the darn gone party. So everybody's partying, everybody dressed up and everything else. And they catch uh the husband. Um the husband of Latrice came to the party. He was the only husband that came. I don't know nobody else um marital status except for the dentist. Uh what what's her name again? Dr. Antoinette Lyles. We know she's divorced. Uh I don't know what Letitia's uh, situation is, and I don't know what, oh yeah, we know Marie is single because she's the one, because she's, she has the three grandchildren, her son is 21 years old, and then I had three children all under the ages of one years old, honey, so she's taking care of her grandchildren, we got that, and then, you know, she's striving, and you know, to leave a legacy for her grandchildren, because her darn gone Son is out there being a rolling stone, honey. Everywhere he lay his ping is his home, honey. So now the, uh, the grandma is doubling up as mama. So, okay, we know her situation. Uh Oh, yeah, we do know uh, Tamara's uh, situation. Because, okay, her story is, you know, she's pushing 40. She, she ain't got no man yet. And, you know, her eggs are frozen, so she don't have to worry about that. She froze them as a precaution because she's dealing with the fibroids. And at one point in time, uh, a famous darn going, I want to say she said football player offered her a million dollars to have a baby with uh, uh, with her. I was like, oh, mm -mm -mm. but she declined because she's a Southern Belle, honey. If she's going to lay down and have a child, she's going to have it done the right way, honey. She said, I cannot be bribed for I am my own woman. See, so they changing the narrative on television. So we got darn on women who are not darn on thirst traps and darn on going to just open it up and darn on let their coochie be a cash register, honey. So it's like they, they already changing the narrative from the love and hip hop because we had we seen on love and hip hop people was getting pregnant left and right and aborting babies for storylines over there on love and hip hop New York. Uh, with dark with that uh, dog face guy, uh, the two girls used to always uh go back and forth with what was his name, Rich Dollars or something like that. But yeah, uh, or Peter was it Peter Guns? I, I think it was Peter Guns. Is what the what the girl, the two girls was always going back and forth over. But hell, both of them, uh, the both Peter and the other guy was trifling. But yeah, they they automatically changing the narrative of having to depend on a man and having to do all the foolishness, but they still with the darn gone shits. Don't get it twisted. And they darn gone started up again at the party with the nice nasty. Darn gone Marie finally come on through 
And, you know, they darn on kept the core at first. They was like, bitch, I don't see it for you. And darn on Latrice was like, bitch, I don't see it for you. So both of them was, uh, was in agreement that they was not going to say shit to each other. Now, darn on uh, Latrice, this is where your friend stirred the pot and got messy. Because they was doing good, not darn on saying not sugar, honey, ice, to, uh, tea to um, nail one of each other. And then the friend took it upon herself to go over there and introduce herself to darn on uh, Marie and get darn on and bring up the conversation. And then by way of darn on forcing darn on Latrice to sit down, and it's like they didn't want to sit down at the same table. Now you darn on forcing them to face they uh, each other eye to eye. And then bringing up the situation at darn on Tamara's party. It was tacky and it was not called for. Marie properly shut it down and said, well, this ain't the time and the place. And it's like, girl, I'm glad you finally um, having some darn on Southern darn on decency for once. Some Southern hospitality. Now, that's how you should have darn on came. In regards to the darn on uh, women's empowerment brunch. But I digress, honey. You should have kept that same tune during the women's empowerment brunch and pulled Latrice to the side and we wouldn't have none of this shit in the first place. But then again, I know y'all got the darn on spice it up a little bit for the darn on storyline. But okay, here we go. But yeah, she darn on finally takes the high road. And not, side note, am I the only one that sees a little bit of old girl in her. Uh, you know the uh, the big heavy set girl that used to be on Bring It. The uh, the the one that used to wear the wigs all the time. Well, shit, all of them wore the damn wigs. Uh, not the not the light skinned chick that used to be the daughter of the oldest one. Not the one that used to be the I meant the mother of Kayla, but the one that used to be the auntie to the other girl. That's who darn on Marie reminds me of. She reminds me of a more brown skin, successful, uh, you know, slimmer version. You know, because, you know, the other girl was big, big, and she's like medium big, honey. So that's who she sort of reminds me of in the face. Like her, her, the way she talks and everything sort of reminds me of old girl. You know, giving me bring it flashbacks. But once again, I digress. Let's get back to the subject at hand. But yeah. It's like your friend darn on Latrice was messy and then got you darn on getting fussed out in the confessionals time I see this bitch wanting to bring shit up and all this, that, and third and not the time. Technically, no. I hope when you darn on look, look back at this, you, you apologize for Latrice because Latrice was trying to do the same thing that you was doing and was trying to darn on avoid you and pay it dust. And then now y'all calls Letitia to come in and having to do canceling with your uh, with your ass, Marie. Have you broke down in tears? I was like, well, damn, girl. I, I mean, the way darn going, uh, uh, Letitia was darn going giving it to you in the professional manner, you would have thought she would have had the darn going degree in psychiatry. She darn going, darn going, uh, coaching the psychiatrist, talking about y'all need to finally end this. Y'all need to finally have a, you know, sit down and this ain't the place. Like, she was really getting darn going Marie together in the most professional way possible. And like I said, the way that she did that was done so darn going well that if you did not know these girls' backstories, that you would have thought that Letitia was the one that was the darn going psychiatrist and not darn going Marie. And that pretty much is what ended out with these first two episodes. Those are everything that stuck out to me. Uh, are y'all watching Belt? Well, I see with the view count, honey. <laughs> but if y'all are watching Bell Collective, y'all tell me what's y'all thoughts on these first two episodes. Y'all leave it down below. Feel free to uh, like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I will see y'all soon with more videos. Mwah.